Welcome back, everybody. This is Real Talk with Minister J. Renee. So glad you can be with me today. So today, our episode is Living Free. Living Free. Oh, my goodness. In this time and in this hour, how important is that in the midst of everything? And, you know, um, I think a lot of times we say that <clears throat> and people think everything is supposed to be perfect all the time when you are a Christian, right? Some people have lived so long in bad situations that they give up on being able to live free. So today, we are going to dive into this. And I wanna, I wanna say this, so if you're gonna follow me with your Bible today at any time, first session or second session, you know, after our little break, hey, I want you, this is, I use the, um, the Passion Translation, which is PPT, and it is so powerful. So I just, I gotta say that because boy, wait till this comes alive in you. Oh my goodness, I am so excited about what God is gonna do in your life uh, in this segment. So um, I wanna talk about as Christians, we have a mission. A lot of times when Christians get saved, they always think about it's just about them. Like they live a life that, oh, okay, I need to get blessings from God. And so it's, it's everything that happens in their eyes has to happen for them, for them. But Jesus modeled this thing for us, right? So yes, he sets us free. But even if you think that your life is uh, insignificant, guess what? It is not to the Lord. He sets you free individually so because you are a part of a bigger picture. You are a part of a bigger picture. You are valuable and Jesus so loves you. And so I want to uh, impress, express everything that it takes to let you know that you know what, getting saved is just the first step of this great adventure, this awesome journey that we walk with the Lord. And so I know you've probably seen the segment on the Holy Spirit. Guess what? He's coming into this segment too because he is vital and important. And if we don't deal with him, then we are just missing the most, well, we're missing the connection that makes this real. So because Jesus came and he was on a mission, then we too are free to be on a mission. Now, if you are a person who thinks, okay, it's all about me, then you're probably gonna struggle with this for a few minutes, for a few minutes, right? Because it just, you know, sometimes, and, and, and I think that this is important and all the topics that we have spoken about in this season, um, abortion, um, um, divorce, grief, all of these different things brings us to a dark place. And the one thing that we want to do is get out of that darkness. And we can be Christians and still go through. But you know, Jesus left us in the world, but he left us with his power because he has overcome the world. So even though we're in the world, we're not of the world and we don't have to respond like the world. All right, so let's look at this. So I am going first to Luke 4 uh, and 18 through 19. And again, I'm in the TPT because I'm going to start this thing. And I hope, uh, oh, Jesus, I'm praying. Oh, my goodness, that you would so speak to every person that views this and speak to their heart. Okay, so let me read this. Um, it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to be hope for the poor, to be hope for the poor, so we can't leave the poor. Okay, healing for the brokenhearted, healing for the brokenhearted, and new eyes for the blind, and to preach to prisoners, you are set free. You are set free. And then the last part of that in verse 19 says, I have come to share the message of Jubilee, for the time of God's great acceptance has begun, right? Jubilee is like, it means celebration. And, and you know, we, I think it's the 20th, the 40th, the 50th, 60th, and 70th. It's certain times of great celebration. But Jesus is saying here, we're not, we're not taking into account all those years. 
This is a time for great celebration because you are set free. Okay. And so what does that say for us? Okay, wait, let me go. I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to move for a minute. I'm going to move for a minute. So I'm going to go to Hebrews and I'm going to look at Hebrews uh, 2 and 10 through 11. This is if you're following along with me in your Bible, okay? So for now, he towers above, he as in Jesus, towers above all creation for all things exist through him and for him. And that God made him pioneer or forerunner for our salvation, perfect through his suffering. Uh-oh, did I say suffering? So if Jesus suffered, we will suffer, but praise God. He is a deliverer. Okay. For this is how he brings many sons and daughters to share in his glory. Let me do this. And that God made Jesus pioneer, forerunner of our salvation, perfect through his sufferings. For this is how he brings, he brings many uh, sons and daughters to share in his glory to share in his glory he brings in other words he didn't come for one person he came that many would come okay i'm gonna I'm go let me go to the next one jesus the holy one makes us holy and as sons and daughters we now belong to his name to his same his same father so he is not ashamed or embarrassed to introduce us as his brothers and sisters. Now, who can say that? Who can say that the Lord who created everything, oh my goodness, and has included us as brothers and sisters? Oh, I think that's so fabulous. Let me go on. I'm on verse 15 in Hebrews 2. By embracing death, Jesus sets free those who live their entire lives in bondage of tormenting uh, dread of death. You know, people are afraid of death. He has overcome death. I got some good news for you today. So you just hold on. All right. For it is clear that he didn't do this for the angels, but for all the sons and daughters of Abraham. This is why he had to be a, a man and take hold of our humanity in every way. So Jesus came from glory, took on, our, took on humanity so that he can, he, can, how, how can say, he can feel us. He know what we're going through. Come on, somebody. All right. So in every way, he made us his brothers and sisters and became our merciful and faithful king, priest before God. He's a king and he's free. Hallelujah. And as the one who removed, removed our sins to make us one with him. So in this walk of Christianity, we are one with Jesus. Now, now the last time I checked, Jesus ain't in jail and he ain't in bondage. And if we are one in him, then we are free in him and with him. Okay, I'm not jump ahead of myself. Verse 18, Hebrews 2 says, He suffered and endured every test and temptation so that he can help us every time we pass through the ordeals of this life. Oh, my goodness. Let me pause and put a pin in it. Because I need to tell you this, right? First of all, that it says every ordeal in our life. Which means this is not a Wednesday and Sunday occasion. This is every single day. So if Jesus calls us brothers and sisters, it's not just for Sunday. It's not just for Wednesday or Tuesday or whatever uh, two days you worship uh, all together uh, as a congregation. Listen, in our personal life, we have to intentionally spend time with Jesus because we have been in darkness we have been tormented we have been abused there are so many different things that have happened to us some are buried so deep that we have forgotten about them and Jesus wants to heal those things too but if we don't stay steady in it then we won't 
see the miracle that he does in our life. And when he does that, know this, my sister, my brother, know this, that he has done this thing. Mm. He has done this thing so that we can live free and he's not judging us. No. He knew all about that. He knew all about that. Listen, before you were ever formed in the womb, he knew the trials that the world would bring to us. That's why he makes sure that we know he has overcome the world, right? And I have to say this, because when I go to this next section, you know, there's just a little something in there that kind of trips us up. Because sometimes when, when we talk about the gospel, when people, uh, you know, speak of the gospel, what they're, sometimes they say all the negative stuff and they just stop right there. And so then we spend our our journey or uh, we, we, we don't really even start to move in as a journey because we stop and we're so busy trying to stay in guilt of our past, which I just read and God has cleansed it. He has washed it. He has removed it by his own blood. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. But he has done all of that and we forget that because people turn and all they want to do is look at the negative. They want to see Jesus in the perspective Perspective of oh my goodness we deserve punishment but the blood has delivered us from punishment of death it has delivered us from punishment so guess what I mean even in the world even when you're going through Jesus is the one who makes miracles happen in your life to bring you through and every time we come through something we trust him even much more we have more faith we begin to see who he is and then we start getting locked solid on our journey oh no he can deliver me from Oh, no, he can deliver me. If he did this, he'll do that. If he did that, he'll do this. He's not a one-stop God. He's a continuous, eternal Jesus Christ, King, Priest, Lord, Savior. He is all of that for us, right? And I just, in this new day, we have come through COVID. We have been through uh, all of this. They had tried to shut the church down, and we are still still here. And you know what? As Christians, we need to be even more powerful now because Jesus did not stop doing miracles. He did not stop. Yes. Yes. A lot of people died. Yes. But you know what? A lot of people transition. Come on, somebody. Come on. We can't look at it. We can't just focus on the negative. Guess what? We are in the world. We're not of the world. And every time we learn that we are, we are, we can live free, that means when something comes against us, we can, we can tell the Lord. So you know what? After uh, this quick break, we're going to come back. Come on, sit down. I'm still going to be in the uh, Passion Translation. Come on back, and we're going to sit down, and we're going to go through this thing. I'm going to dig and dive, and I know you're ready for it, all right? I'll be right back. Hi, good people. I'm Karen McKnight, and I'm host of the program, Lord's Temple Fitness. On the program where we will practice yoga, meditation, and breathing techniques so we can tap into the body's own natural healing abilities so that we really can feel better, and I can teach you how. So be sure to join us every week right here or on demand at ssclivetv.com. SSC Live TV. It's TV out. Hey, you're, I'm back. You got your stuff? Okay, let's go. So I, let's, I'm going to pick up right from here. I read Hebrews 2 and 18. It says, he suffered and endured every test and temptation so that he can help us every time we pass through ordeals of life. So let me just tell you, about um, life, right? I'm, I'm going to tell you, let me tell you something. No matter what I say now, don't get discouraged. Something good is always coming. Here we go. I'm in Galatians 5. Um, and so what I want to do is talk about, mm, you have the PPT, you're going to love this. 
I'm going to talk about the behavior of self-life when you live for yourself, okay? The, uh, the behavior of self-life is obvious, okay? It's sexual immorality, lustful thoughts, pornography, and listen to me. I know a whole lot of people who are addicted to pornography, okay? I'm going to leave that right there. Chasing after things instead of God. Oh, Lord, I just, I need you to bless me right here. Oh, I got it. Okay. Uh, manipulating others. Uh, hatred of those who get in your way. Senseless arguments. Check this out. Resentment when others are favored. Temper tantrums. Okay, so I'm going to just tell you, I'm going to just tell you, yeah, you know, I slip sometimes, crazy. Angry quarrels, only thinking of yourself. Being in love with your own opinion. Being envious of the blessings of others. Murder, uncontrolled addiction, wild party, and all other similar behavior. Then 521 says this, Haven't I already warned you that those who use their freedom for these things will not inherit the kingdom realm of God? Now, I love this version because it says kingdom realm of God. So a lot of times when people read uh, the Bible and they read this, right, um, the reason why or one reason may be that this life continues to go on in self-life is because they think that the blessings will only come once they go to heaven. But the Lord has arranged it because I know I talked about this. We live in him, he lives in us. Or he lives in us, him and the Father come in and they commune with us, then we choose to live in them by way of the Holy Spirit. So now we have this relationship if you will that's what I call it but what happens also in that relationship then the thing the kingdom of heaven comes to the earth come on somebody oh y'all wasn't ready for that so is it hard to believe that we can bring the realm of God to where we are I'm talking about living free okay so I'm gonna so let me go on because I love this I'm still in Galatians 5 but now let's jump to uh, verses 22, because this is what everybody loves. This is what everybody wants to quote. They forget about all these scriptures that I read before that. They don't want to leave them alone, but they want all of this right here. So we're going to forsake those. I'm going to tell you how. And then we're going to go to 22. It says, but the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all its varied expressions. So check this out. Joy that overflows. Peace that subdues patience that endures, uh, kindness in action, a life full of virtue, a life full of virtue. Come on, living in virtue. Faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and strength of spirit, and strength of spirit, and strength. Okay, praise God. Never set the law above these qualities, for they are meant to be limitless. Limitless. There's not a limit on what God gives us when we're dealing in love. And the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside, remember this relationship with the Holy Spirit, he's the one that brings these things up on the inside of us and causes us to live free. Praise God. So let me go to uh, verse 24. Keep in mind that we belong to Jesus Christ, <clears throat> have already experienced cru uh, crucifixion. So we who belong in Jesus Christ, have already experienced crucifixion. In other words, we've already died. We've died to that self-life we were just talking about. For everything connected with our self-life was put to death on the cross and crucified with Messiah. My goodness. My goodness. In other words, that self-life does not have power over you. So it says uncontrolled addiction. The Holy Spirit's power that overcomes uncontrolled addiction. The Holy Spirit's power on the inside of you that lives through you and in you 
also has power over pornography. Come on, somebody. I'm talking to somebody that wants to be free. Okay. My goodness, I love this. So let me go. I'm still going. I'm in Galatians 5. This whole chapter was so good. I prayed I get to the end of this. Here we go. So uh, in verse 25, if the Spirit is the source of our life, if the Spirit is the source of our life, we must also allow the Spirit to direct every aspect of our life. Every aspect of our So that's not just on Wednesday and Sunday. That's on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday. Every aspect of our lives. My goodness, I love it. So may we never be arrogant or look down on another, for each of us is an original. My goodness. We must forsake all jealousy that diminishes the value of others. Listen, that's something um, else that um, has been on my heart. You know, you know, uh, we have this thing about when we, 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 we criticize others if they don't do something like us. If they don't do it like us. They don't look like us when we do it. Then, oh, my goodness, then we have to criticize them or devalue them. But you know what? Everyone is an original. So they're not going to do it like you. They're not going to do it like you. I'm not going to do it like you. I can't preach like you. Whatever you're expecting. I don't know, but I'm an original. And this is the way God made me. I'm going to live my life for him, and I'm going to let the Holy Spirit direct every aspect of my life. Why? Because I want to be, uh, become what he created me to be. Bless the Lord. So check this out. Um, I want to say this. Don't let people discredit you. Don't let people try to tell you how to live your life in Christ. Well, it's got to look like this. You spend time with Christ. You spend time in the Word of God, in the Word of God, reading the Word of God. Because this is the way love develops. Love develops. This is the way you are confident when the Holy Spirit speaks to you. You know he's guiding because the Holy Spirit it's going to speak from the Word of God, right? He'll show you. So, um, so we learn whatever language we know. So English is the language that I grew up learning, right? So when someone talks to me, they want me to understand they're going to have to speak English. So when we are in the spirit realm, right, and the Bible, listen, you know, don't get so caught up on, oh, they... They doing this, ask the Holy Spirit what Bible to buy. <laughs> you know, ask every aspect of our life. Holy Spirit, show me what Bible, what version. You know, you, that's why you read so many different versions, because you can get a fullness of it. Some versions were written so people would just understand. So um, don't get caught up on it. I'm not going to read the Bible. You have to read the Word of God, because it is truth and it is life. And to understand it and to live it, we have to be in the Holy Spirit. And every single day, every single day, you know what? Does that mean people are not going not gonna to come against you? Probably so. Absolutely. They're going to probably be jealous of you. But you know what? That doesn't stop you. You continue on in the Holy Spirit. I just always say, okay, God, you got a plan. You got a plan. And if I can't figure out how to respond in situations, listen, I'm going to just be straight up. I start praying in tongues. It might be under my breath where that person or that situation can't hear me, or I might not even pray in tongues in that area. I might pray in tongues in my car or at home before I leave, go into the situation. Either way, the Holy Spirit is going to guide it. He has never failed. He has never failed. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I know that he is going to do it, right? So when we look at, uh, we look at our diseases and our sickness, you got to say, I know he has a plan because he died. So that I don't have to suffer from sickness. But listen, are you going to let him guide you in how you live and how you treat your temple? Come on, somebody. It's a new day. It's a new way. And I just, we have to grab hold of this. If we want to see the power that we're looking for, if we want to see the miracles that we're looking for, it is really time to stop living little pieces of the Bible and live the word by way of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. And he will not leave us. He will not forsake us. I mean, to the end of the age, he is not going anywhere. But let me tell you, keep your heart and your mind focused on him. And you will enjoy 
this journey, you will know what living free really is. You can be uh, in a rough marital situation. You know what? Seriously. Go pray for, before God and stop telling God how to do it. Stop giving him a timeline and trust his plan. You know, you, oh, if he don't do it this way, then oh, this is beyond prayer. This is beyond God. This is, there's no fixing this. God said, is there anything too hard for me? Absolutely not, Lord. Absolutely not. So work today to, to press. I'm, I was trying to go to 1 Corinthians 12 really quick. Oh, my goodness, because I love this. Okay, I'm going to try to do this really quick because I am running out of time. It says, the same God distributes different kinds of miracles that accomplish different results through each believer's gift and ministry as he energizes and activates them. So in times past, they say, oh, well, the Holy Spirit didn't give you that. You don't know what the Holy Spirit's going to give somebody. They can't tell you what the Holy Spirit's going to give you. They can't tell you how much. How much will you seek him? Listen, the only person that limits the Holy Spirit is you. <laughs> I said it. The only person that limits the Holy Spirit is you. The more you come, the more he'll give. The more you give, the more you give, the more he gives. So in this hour and in this time, let us focus our mind on knowing that God is a good and giving God and he wants us to live a victorious life and live free from every bondage known to man. So listen. I want to personally invite you to the speed. We have three campuses, three in-person campuses, Indiana, Louisville, and Hardin County. But you know what? If you are not in this area, I personally invite you to our e-campus. So I am inviting you because it's a new day. It's a new way. It is time for the saints to live free. Hey, God bless you. I am out of time. And I will see you next time. God bless you all. Be with you. And may you get a deep revelation from every episode of Real Talk. See you next time. This is Minister David. God bless you.